Happy Ash Wednesday. I'm going to begin my homily this evening, which has a bit of a penitential, it's the season of penance, tone, a very somber and deep tone. I'm going to begin with a little bit of uh, humor of sorts, so follow me as we go. Some of you might remember the last time that I was wearing violet. It was the season of Advent, of course, another penitential season, and uh, I had the custom of singing some Advent carols. I do not sing songs during the entire season of Lent, thanks be to God. However, a little tune came into my head today, and so uh, here we go. Needs a little bit of a preface. So if someone bakes things, they're called a, a baker, okay? And I was thinking today, what do you call someone who takes palm branches and, and palm branches and turns them into a bunch of ashes for Ash Wednesday? In my first parish assignment, uh, my pastor always entrusted the palm branches to some of his Boy Scouts, otherwise pyromaniacs, um, as I was as well as a young man. So uh, I gave the palm branches that you had brought back dutifully to the church and that were blessed last year on Palm Sunday, and I entrusted them to uh, Nick Bischoff and to Matthew Keeble, and they delivered last night a mason jar of ashes. And uh, so what do you call someone that makes ashes? Raise your hand if you've ever seen the musical uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Okay, here we go. Ashmaker, Ashmaker, find me a match, light me a light, get me a branch. Ashmaker, Ashmaker, look through your stash and make me some perfect ash. Ashmaker, Ashmaker, these palms once wavered. They patted the ground for the donkey and a savior. Bring me some ash, for I'm longing to be a sign of his love, you see. This Lent we will pray, fast and give. For Lent we will self-deny. This Lent, well, I will not deny, for he has given me everything. Ashmaker, Ashmaker, find me some ash. Find me a branch, light me a match. Ashmaker, Ashmaker, look through your stash and make me some perfect ash. There you go. Ash Wednesday holds within itself a lot of tension. We come to a church building where we willfully allow a priest, a deacon, or a layperson to put ashes on our head. Why? Because we believe we're sinners. Because we know that we came from dust and we will return to dust. There's this great sense on Ash Wednesday of our identity of the fact that we are sinners. We kind of like that. And with that same tension of our sinfulness and our humanity is also a great sense of hope. We truly do believe that the recognition of our sinfulness, the recognition of the fact that we are sinners, is also a tremendous hope. So although we grovel in our sinfulness and we remember that we're dust and we're going to return to dust, we also realize that this is a great moment of hope. Because these 40 days of prayer and penance, these 40 days of fasting and almsgiving, will end in the glory of the resurrection. And thus these 40 days that we commit ourselves to, the discipline of Lent, leads us to become all the more who we are called to be, which is saints. 
These 40 days exist for no other reason but for us to become saints, for us to accept, for us to embrace our calling to be saints of God. We heard several times in our gospel passage today that what we do during these 40 days, or whenever, we're supposed to do for the glory of God, not to be seen, but to do them truly for the glory of God. And it says, though, that our Father will reward us. Does it say that our Father will reward us right now? It doesn't. It says that our Father will reward us. It also says that our Father sees us. For your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. I want that to kind of be one of the images that you have this Lent. That God sees you. When I was on retreat last week, the retreat master, every time that he would give a talk, he would come into the chapel and we would all kneel down. And then he would pray an act of the presence of God, like we have an act of contrition or an act of hope or an act of faith. He would pray an act of the presence of God. And the prayer went like this. Oh my God, I believe that you can see me and hear me. I adore you. I love you. And I'm deeply sorry for my sins. Sweet Saint Joseph, pray for us. Immaculate Mother, pray for us. Dear Jesus, I love you. I found that prayer to be very beautiful in the way that he began it. I know that you can see us and hear us. God sees what we do. And oftentimes we have in our, our mind that God sees what we do and he's not happy. God sees what we do and it's not enough. God sees what we do and we're unworthy. But in today's gospel passage, God sees what we do and he rewards us. He repays us. Because we're his sons and daughters. And he loves us. So tonight, as we enter into these 40 days, as we commit ourselves to prayer and penance and fasting and almsgiving and charity all the more to God and neighbor, let us not forget that God does watch us, that God does see us. But let's not be afraid to believe that he delights in us, that he sees us as his sons, as his daughters, and he rejoices. May these 40 days of prayer and penance lead us to hope and lead us to the glory of our Lord's resurrection.